Okay, so I'm going to show you uh, GeoGebra, Geometry, and all the things you're going to need to complete the task. So I'm going to show you uh, how to set up the Cartesian plane, how to add points, how to add polygons, and how to do our three transformations. Translate, slide, uh, rotate, and reflect. So first thing you should always be doing is turning on the axis, so you get the X and the Y axis going. And the second thing I would turn on is the grid and just the major grid lines. Those are going to show every one, two, three. Okay. If you're not seeing um, even numbers like that, you know, going up by one, you may have to zoom in or out a bit. Okay. Um, I'd also make sure snap to grid is on. That's just going to keep things on the one so that you're not going to get into decimals and all that kind of stuff. Because we're not doing that in grade five for this task anyways. Second thing is if you just click on the left click, you can slide it over because remember in grade five, we're only working in uh, quadrant one. Now there may be some bonus tasks that you want to go into the other quadrants. That would be your choice. It's quadrant two, three, and four, by the way. Okay. So the other thing I would always do is to go ahead and turn on more tools because you're going to want to have these transformation tools on for sure uh, because that's what our, our unit is. Okay. And um, we're also going to want to have the text tool. I'm just trying to remember where that text tool is right now, right down here under media. Okay. So for example, um, I'm going to draw my polygon first. Now, for these tasks, always be trying to draw, or always draw a polygon that is not uh, regular. And regular means you know the same on all sides. So don't draw a square. Don't draw a, you know, like a stop sign. Okay. Draw something that's a little funky because that's going to show um, the rotations and stuff like that a little bit easier. So I always like this little. I call it a boot. Oops, my A is not quite on the point. If that happens to you, by the way. You can move it. Just click on move and bump it up. Okay. And you can change the color and all that stuff if you want. I'm just going to leave it blue for it right now. So there's my boot shape, okay? Um, so for this project, you're going to need to, for a lot of these activities, it's going to be take two screenshots. So for example, here's my start, okay? So I would then take a screenshot of this. Well, I mean, let's go ahead and do it. Let's take a screenshot of that and just make sure you get, you know, enough of the quadrant so that I can see where it is and it, all the points, locations, and make sure you've got the origin, zero, zero in there, okay? There's my screenshot. I'm going to grab that. And then I would just go into the project and go ahead and paste it, paste it in, make it a little bigger maybe. There we go. Okay. And then often the second screenshot is going to be after the transformation, right? So there's my start and then I'm going to post my finish. So I go back into GeoGebra and I'm going to translate. So again, I don't want to grab the points because that's just going to, you know, that's just going to move the points out. Okay. That's not what we're doing in this activity. Oops. I want to move the whole polygon. So just grab the polygon in the middle and move it around. So where did I start? Okay. I started here. And I'm just going to look at one point to keep track. And the easiest one for me to look at is B. It's a 1-1. One, one. Okay. So maybe it's as simple as I move it to there. Translate, I should say. Sorry. And if I do, it went from 1-1 one, one to 2-2. Two, two. Okay. The other points all moved the same amount. They moved a certain amount X, a certain amount Y. Well, how much? It was here. Now it's here. So it went from... I moved one X and I moved one Y. So plus one X plus one Y. Okay. So I'm going to write that. Choose the text tool, click here. And I'm going to say, you know, I translated my polygon plus one X and plus one Y. Okay. And then you just throw that right in there. Boom. Okay. Now I'm ready for my second screenshot. Again, try to make sure you get the origin and a little bit in there. Copy. Back into my slides, paste, make it nice and big, and there we go. Okay? So I would have completed that task. I've got my original, and I've got my translation, right? And when I am marking this, I will say, hmm, did they actually do what they said? Well, I'm going to look at one of the points. This time, maybe I'll look at E. So E was at 2, 4, and if it's going to go 1 and 1, plus 1, X plus 1, Y, then it should be at 2, 4, and so now it should be at 3, 5, and I will check that, right? Is point E at 3, 5? Yes, it is. Okay, so that would be a, a correct answer. On to the next task. All right? So there you go. So that's how you, that's the basics of everything. Okay? Now, if I want to do the other transformations, I'm just going to delete this. And maybe I'll move this back to where it was. Okay? Um, so here we go. The other two transformations are down here. Okay? By the way, you can translate using this tool. I'm not going to show you how right now. But if you want to experiment with that one, you can. Um, it's kind of neat. Um, another option. Okay, so other twos are we have to rotate and reflect. So I'm going to show reflect first. 
Um, there's a couple reflect options, but I really like reflect about a line because I think it's uh, comparable to using a mirror in school, those little red guys. So I like that one. So to do that, you need a line, okay? You can choose line or segment. A line goes on forever, um, so it's kind of weird maybe to look at. So maybe you'd prefer to use a segment. You make your own choice. Okay, so I'm going to make my segment here. It does not have to be the same length or height or whatever of the polygon. It can be as long or short as you want. It could actually only be one long, but I like to make it, you know, whatever, that longish. Okay, then you're going to choose the Reflect tool, and it tells me what to do. Select, select an object to reflect, then line of reflection. So basically, I need to choose the object. Don't choose a point, because it'll only reflect that point. I choose the object. Okay, you see it kind of highlighted it a bit there. And I need to choose the line. Now, the problem here is that people think they click the line because they click there, but it's not. It needs to be the hand. Okay, now it'll reflect it about the line. Okay, and again, I would have screenshot the before, screenshot the after, and I'd be done reflections. Okay, so now rotate. I find rotate is the hardest one, personally. So we're going to choose rotate around point. Now, we don't have a point to rotate around, so we need to make a point. So again, I scroll up. Make a point. I don't know. Put it wherever you want. I'm going to put my point right here. Okay? And we're going to reflect 90 degrees. So if you think about when you used uh, a compass in class or a protractor um, and you rotate things 90 degrees, it's like a you know the corner of a square, corner of a rectangle, 90 degrees. So I'm going to choose rotate around point. And again, I'm going to see what the direction say. Select object to rotate and center point. Then enter angle. So I choose my object first. So again, in the middle of the polygon, I choose my point. I want to rotate around second. And I'm going to make this 90 degrees, not 45. Although you can experiment with other degrees if you want. And I think if you want to go clockwise or counterclockwise, we're trying to keep it in our quadrant. So if I go counterclockwise, that means it's going to go the opposite way of a clock, right? So that should keep it in uh, the quadrant. If I go clockwise, uh, I don't think, well, let's think here. It would go, yeah, it should still be OK. I'm going to keep it on counterclockwise, and I'm going to say OK. All right, and there's my rotated uh, polygon. Now, if you'd rather do 180 degrees, you could. Um, but experiment, can see what you can come up with. And again, screenshot the before, screenshot the after, plop those into the uh, slides, and then you're done. Okay. A bonus activity that you could do for this uh, challenge is use some of these other, other quadrants, like maybe translate you know, negative X and negative Y and end up in this quadrant or something like that. So those are some options for a bonus, but I want to make sure everyone does the normal ones first, okay, like those B level grade five expectations first. And then if you want to get into some, some of these funky other options, you certainly could. Um, I think that's everything you need to show you. Don't forget to include text on each final product. So you can say, you know, I rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise or I reflected about the line, or I translated this much x, this much y. OK, so all that information can be included as well. And I think that's all the tools that you need to know. Um, this is a good tool to know, select, select objects. Because sometimes if you try to delete things, it doesn't, doesn't always work so well. Like it just deletes the inside, it doesn't delete the points. Select objects will let you grab a whole bunch of stuff at once and clean it out all at once. All right, so good luck. And can't wait to see those final products.